One of the highlights of our Viking European Sojourn Tour was sailing the Iron Gates. As one may expect, the first part of entering the Iron Gates is to go past the first lock, which is also known as the Iron Gates Power and Lock System. The Iron Gates is a gorge system on the Danube River that is about 150 kilometers long. And it also is the narrowest section on the Danube River. I believe at one point it gets down to 150 meters wide. At one point, uh, the water level was uh, so fast here and there were some shallow shoals and whirlpools and rapids that it took uh, over three weeks to get past this particular section on the Danube. So they decided to uh, work on that by creating a lock system which raised the water and flooded the rapids and uh, decreased the water flow. The result of that was that uh, you had a very pleasing place to, to cruise through. Still, the water rose quite fast, but you're in this gorge system, which is just very high cliffs, so it's extremely scenic, and you go past a few small villages, and there's some really amazing historical sites which are pointed out during this cruise. So follow along, and I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. So this is a typical cliff system you see along the Iron Gate section of the Danube. So you can see they're quite high and quite interesting. Also on the river, you'll find a surprising amount of boat traffic, not only cruise ships, but pleasure boats and cargo ships. Now there's lots of history along this section of the Danube. In fact, the Romans built the road across the Danube at this particular location. Unfortunately, when the uh, lock system was created, it raised the water high enough that the road system was flooded out. So the road is now about 30 meters under the level of the water here. The only thing that remains is this monument, which was erected to commemorate the construction of the road. Fortunately, that monument was placed well above the Danube, so it's still visible today. Our next highlight was sailing through the narrowest section of the Danube, and that is right along the Iron Gates here. And you can see this river cruise ship uh, in front of us is going to sail through it first, and then we'll follow right behind them. And I believe it's 150 meters wide. And then after that, we'll come to the highlight of, uh, of the Iron Gate trip, for me anyways, which is a carving out of the stone rock of one of the old Dacian kings. Now here's a fun fact for you. Before the, the Iron Gate Dam system or canal system was set up with locks, uh, a lot of sturgeon used to be in the river. So they used to catch sturgeon and, and basically take their eggs. And the Titanic, when it sailed, actually had sturgeon eggs or caviar that was uh, harvested from sturgeon out of this river. Unfortunately, with the lock system, sturgeons can no longer get up to this level of the river, so they were no longer found here. Now, as you can see, the cliffs are quite high here. The, the valley is quite narrow. And my understanding is at one point before the locks were here, this area uh, contained a very large whirlpool, making it very hard to navigate around. So as you can see, this is an absolutely beautiful portion of uh, the river. It's probably a highlight for most people. I know I was really looking forward to this day, not only because of the beauty that I expected to see, but uh, it was uh, just a nice break from all the uh, traveling through the cities and touring through the different forts and monasteries and churches and so forth. I wanted to get back out uh, into nature and onto the water, and I found that this was just a perfect relaxing day, and Viking did an excellent excellent job for a variety of reasons. One, uh, they gave us a, a lot of discussion through their intercom system or directly with uh, the Viking cruise director explaining what the si historical significance of the ride was and the places that we saw. But also uh, when we were sitting on the deck, they could provide blankets and they've offered refreshments and snacks as we cruised along. So it's just, I think for most people, one of the highlights of taking the Vikings passage to Eastern Europe. To be honest, I would say cruising along the Danube through the Iron Gates makes this trip justifiable all by itself, and all the rest is just a bonus. 
So at this point, we got to see our first look at a monument to a Dacian king. His name was Decibelus. So during the Roman Empire times, the Romans uh, wanted to establish a settlement here, but the Dacians uh, basically had forts and settlements in this particular area, so the Romans did not want to be attacked. They're small outlying settlements, so they paid the Dacian king to basically leave them alone, but instead of leaving them alone, he actually reinforced his uh, surrounding fortresses and so forth, so uh, he was able to keep control of this particular area. I'm not sure when they carved this monument to the king, Decibelus, but uh, it is impressive and uh, we are very fortunate in the fact that we were able to get fairly close to the monument and the Viking crews uh, director had the ship actually do a 360 degree turn of the boat here. Both sides of the ship got to see it, although I wouldn't say that was absolutely necessary. There's lots of room on the top of the ship, so you're able to, uh, we were all able to see it anyways, but I guess if you were down in the dining room outside, uh, out of the wind, if there was any wind or inclement weather that you didn't like, having the boat go 360 degrees around really made it convenient for so that all sides of the ship are able to see it, even those people who decided to stay in their cabins and on their own personal balcony. Balconies. So after seeing the monument to the Dacian king, we sailed past this church here. I believe it's a Greek Orthodox church, and it was moved here. So it hasn't been there all that long. It was moved when they built the canal system, or I should say the lock system, and it had to be moved. Also would have been flooded out. And this is the narrowest section of the Danube, at least in the Iron Gates portion of the Danube. It's 150 meters wide. Now the town that you see in the distance used to be a fishing village when there wasn't locks on the river. Uh, the fishing village mostly supported the collection or harvesting of sturgeon and then the collecting of their eggs and the production of caviar. Unfortunately, when that industry collapsed with the creation of the lock system, uh, they were lucky enough to uh, convert themselves over to a tourist destination and this particular town is not one of the most popular areas for Europeans to come and uh, vacation during the summer months. For the next part of the video, I'm just going to let you observe what the cruise was like. It was absolutely beautiful going through this narrow gorge and just seeing all the boat traffic and taking in the sights of the rock formations. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please like and subscribe. At this point, I'm trying to uh, put a video out on specific excursions that we've done or aspects of the trip, as well as a summary video from each day of the Viking European sojourn trip. And this particular portion, which is the Vikings passage to Eastern Europe. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and subscribe.